So today I'm finally going to get rid of this tin can that Yamaha's got fastened to the bottom of the Tenere 700. When I first looked at the pictures of this bike, I thought, awesome, a bike that finally comes with a metal skid plate. When I actually got to look at it, I realized that while it is metal, it's pretty thin metal. That's actually kind of fun. <laughs> when you get to the last bolt here, make sure you watch your fingers, you might lose one. Hi, Poochie. So I don't know why they have all these cutouts in here. I mean, I guess I would assume it's for draining purposes, but having that all removed like that is going to, I would say, severely reduce the amount of protection that this is going to give you, uh, which obviously, by the material thickness, uh, is not going to be much to begin with. Uh, as you can see, just a 20 ounce hammer swung lightly at the bottom of it uh, is already putting dents in it. So I can hardly imagine what having all that weight behind it uh, plowed straight into a rock is, is going to do to it. So definitely not something that uh, should be used in extreme off-roading conditions. So I think the difference between these two is pretty self-explanatory. However, I think a, a close-up is in order here. Uh, obviously you can tell the Camel ADV skid plate is, man, is that double? It's not, it's, it's close to double the, the material thickness. This one kind of makes me think tank armor, and this one makes me think soda can. Personally, I think this is really a beautifully designed skid plate. Obviously, you've got way more protection. Uh, it's all TIG welded. It is much thicker. It's gonna offer uh, higher protection here than the stock one would to kind of keep some of the mud off of the oil filter. The other thing that this skid plate has that I'm not aware of any other skid plate having out on the market today. This is actually the same material that uh, cutting boards are made out of. So this is a, a really a strong material. And the reason that they've got this fixed to the bottom here uh, is partially to kind of help with some of the spray from the front tire. Obviously you've kind of got a, a mini sandblaster going on there. So that'll kind of protect the, the plate. The other thing that this thing is going to help you with is sliding over rocks and logs and stuff. Uh, this is going to be a, a slipperier material than the metal would be. The nice thing about having this little tail sticking out of the back here is it's going to protect the exposed rear linkage. The other thing that I love about this skid plate compared to the stock one and again any other one out on the market, you've actually got a fifth mounting point and that's what these holes in the bottom here are for. Factory manual actually tells you not to jack the bike up uh, with the stock skid plate. Definitely not recommending uh, nor suggesting that once you have this installed that you should be able to uh, jack the bike up without any issues. I'm gonna do it. Uh, I think you should follow your owner's manual or do whatever you want with your own bike, but uh, I'm gonna feel a lot better about jacking it up with this underneath it. So with the stock plate, 164.6. Can't forget about the hardware. Uh, stick that in my pocket. So then with the Camel ADV one, we are at 170.6 even. So, six pounds heavier. There's really just nothing to the stock skid plate. So not adding weight really isn't an option if you want more protection, I think. The six pounds that this is going to add to the bike is going to be well worth the protection that this is going to offer you. Could you find a slightly smaller, thinner gauge skid plate out there? Yeah, I'm sure you could. But the whole point of adding an aftermarket skid plate is to get more protection. So if you're really worried about the, the couple pounds that you might save, I mean, you can do some more searching out on the internet to see what you can find. But to be honest, I think there isn't going to be anything that's going to give you better protection than this. And like I said, for me, that six pounds is going to be well worth the added protection that this is going to provide. So we're going to be working from the right side of the bike here. And one thing that I kind of missed the first time that I watched the assembly video is that you do actually need two washers uh, for this part. So we're going to do one on the bolt. This piece is going to get installed with the kind of toe of the, the boot, if you will, facing forward. It just slips up in there like that with the sleeve in place since I don't have a center stand. If you do have a center stand, the configuration is a little bit different. Then I'm just going to take my bolt with the washer on it 
and slip it in from the shifter side. If you notice, it does get a little bit close to the exhaust, the catalytic converter, I guess. But with that washer in there, it's spaced out a little bit better. Uh, at first, it was really close, and that's why I kind of had to go back and look to see where the washers went. Uh, so the washer for mine, uh, one of them was on this part, the other one was in the little hardware bag. So you will want one on both sides. And then after that's in place, get your nylock nut. And thread that on. So this is just going to hang loose until we get the skid plate on it. So now we're going to need to get into this bag of hardware here. The longest ones here are going to be used in the back of the skid plate because you've got this extra kind of nub welded on here. The middle ones here are going to be used in the front of the skid plate, uh, just where the stock bolts would have been fastened through kind of that oblong hole there to the upper left. Kind of looks like a camel turd. And then the shorter ones down at the end here are going to be used for the back boot support here. And the bolts for that back mount are gonna be the only ones that do not get the washers. As usual, blue Loctite on everything other than the bolt that goes into the nylock nut in the back. Make sure you don't do that. I'm gonna have to loosen my front ones up a bit so I can get that pushed up under where it needs to go. This looks like pulling those back ones out did the trick, so. Make that mistake like I did. That should get you fixed up. My socket doesn't want to fit in there, but luckily this is actually a Torx head on the inside, so I'm gonna grab one of those. You definitely don't want to overdo these. Better to have one fall out than to strip one out. I wouldn't swear that this is right, but I've got a 17 on that side. Ah. So definitely not the easiest thing to get installed. However, you should really only have to do it once. When it's time to change the oil, all you really have to do is pull these two bolts out. Otherwise, the rest are obviously just going to come out like a stock plate would. So really a pretty quick install. Uh, definitely something that I think could be done in 10 minutes, like Corey says. This took me a little bit longer. Obviously, filming kind of uh, is a little bit of goofing around and stuff. But uh, once you kind of know what you need to do, uh, it's definitely a very quick install. And like I said, for changing oil, I don't think this is really going to be much extra work. Two extra bolts, which I think are... Definitely going to be nice to have there and are well worth uh, having to remove once in a while uh, to get that extra support that that back gives you. So I think all that's really left to do now is just to uh, look it over and see what we think. What do you guys think? Pretty sweet. I wasn't really sure how I would like the black to begin with. I kind of went back and forth on the silver versus the black, but I think I'm definitely glad that I went with the black. I think it really... Kind of blends in nice, yet definitely looks meaty and mean on there. So if you're wondering why I'm missing my exhaust pipe here, uh, maybe you got a, a bit of a glance at that, but uh, I am working on my own spark arrestor for this. Um, I think I've got a pretty inexpensive option for you guys. Uh, the, the first pass at it didn't go so well. I don't know how good of a look you got at that. Hopefully not too good. Uh, I've got a better idea and uh, I've got another part on the way that I'm going to be uh, doing a video on sometime soon. If you want to see more videos like this, if you want to see more from me, hit the subscribe button. I put a video out at least once a week. And if you can't get out and enjoy this beautiful world today, then check out one of these videos over here. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care, stay safe, and stay swanky.